Here are the top stories for today, July 8, 2022. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has tested positive for COVID-19. The presidential management staff advises those who had close contact with the president to observe protocols and monitor themselves for symptoms. The government is working round the clock to aid those affected by floods in Ifugao as heavy rains continue to batter the province, displacing some 500 families. Motorists may get some breathing space as an oil price rollback looms next week due to some global developments. And on the road to recovery, Boracay Island sees a jump in tourist arrivals more than two years after the coronavirus pandemic grounded flights and halted global tourism activities. For the top story, following various in-person engagements, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. has tested positive for COVID-19, the palace confirms. Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles said the chief executive has been experiencing a slight fever, but she assured he's generally doing well. Marcos was not able to physically attend the ceremony of the 246th anniversary of United States independence in the U.S. Embassy today. His son, Ilocos Representative Sandro Marcos, tested negative, while First Lady Lisa Reneta Marcos are out of town together with their two other sons. The Health Department, meanwhile, said the President does not need to undergo the confirmatory RT-PCR testing given his symptoms with the result. The President has tested positive in an antigen test for COVID-19. Those who have been in close contact with him are currently being informed by the presidential management staff. The president will be isolated for seven days uh, from the time that he was tested positive. And after that, if his symptoms have resolved already, uh, he may be able to go back to work and have his face-to-face -face activities. In other news, over 500 affected families in the Cordillera region were assured of urgent aid as the new social welfare and development chief, Erwin Tulfo, made sure to speed up relief response. This following the devastating flash floods and landslides in several areas in Banawe, Ifugao. Stephanie Civiliano has the details. This motor vehicle was easily carried by the Russian flood along the road in Banawi, Ifugao. Residents can't help but watch the frightening flash floods across their homes amid strong torrential rains. This mud-filled water almost spills over the parked cars along the way. Houses were not even spared from the flooding. The DSWD Cordillera Administrative Region initially reported some 500 affected families. It's six barangays, including Amganat, Poblacion, Tamaan, Viewpoint, Bocos, and Poitan. Three were reported injured. And as these reports went viral online, new Social Welfare Development Chief Erwin Tulfo assured the government is here and will not be caught off guard. Tulfo said relief responses are in place as he tasked the regional offices to be on close look. We have to be prepared. Also, all the regional offices should always be prepared to switch from second responder, maging first responder style. Following the flash floods and landslides, police forces have started their clearing operations. The Bureau of Fire Protection also took care of some displaced vehicles, while the regional government immediately distributed family food packs to over 1,500 individuals. Kasi baka tulog sila vice mayor o yung mga matatas official ng probinsya, they look for DSWD. Pag nakita niya DSWD, may pag-asa. We will be eating tonight, we will have uh, dry clothes, we will have hygiene kits. So, uh, basically, we really have to inform them that DSWD here is always here, right, just right behind you. Diba? As of now, the DSWD car said more than 17.5 million pesos worth of family food packs are still available for the region. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Stephanie Savellano.
The Department of Health guarantees that the food being sold at the local markets are safe and of quality. This comes in the wake of the controversy about the alleged high level of ethylene oxide found in a popular noodle brand. According to Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere, the Food and Drug Administration or FDA is strictly monitoring the food being consumed by the public. And that chemicals such as ethylene oxide has a certain threshold when included as a component in edible products. She also assures that the noodle product identified with the presence of the said chemical is safe for consumption. Verhera meanwhile informed the public about the danger of ethylene oxide when consumed at a higher level. This uh, particular food product, we have a local manufacturer. Hindi po siya kasama dun sa mga nag-manufacture dun sa ibang bansa. Meron po tayong mga thresholds sa mga ganitong chemical na matatagpuan nga po sa mga iba't ibang pagkain natin and uh, we will be giving information through our Food and Drug Administration. Verhera meanwhile informed the public about the danger of ethylene oxide when consumed at a higher level. The Department of Health says it fully supports the implementation of face-to-face -face classes, noting that health experts have already recommended it. Under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere said the DOH just needs to ensure that the environment is safe. As such, they will be implementing minimum public health standards in all classrooms and will require children to wear masks except for strenuous activities. Hindi po natin kailangan at hindi natin minamandato na mabakunahan ng mga bata but we strongly encourage no, ang ating mga magulang to consider na mabakunahan din ang ating mga kapataan para mas protektado sila. We will be implementing minimum public health standards in all classrooms. Kung hindi po talaga kaya, no, I think... Uh, Marami po sa ating mga eskwelahan, hindi po talaga kaya yung physical distancing. So the most po na ating pong i-require would really be that the children uh, will wear masks, especially during those times na magkakasama sa classroom. But of course, there will be exceptions. Like kung meron pong high impact or yung mga strenuous activities sa mga bata, na exempt naman po. Just so that we ensure that teachers and non-teaching personnel who will interact with the children should be vaccinated. Maglalagay po tayo ng mga bakunahan sa mga bawat eskwelahan para po mas ma-encourage po natin ang ating mga magulang para pabakunahan ng kanilang mga anak. Meanwhile, Verhere also reports a total of 51,622 dengue cases all over the country. Among the regions that have the highest cases are Central Luzon, Central Visayas, and Zamboanga Peninsula. Ang ginagawa po ng ating Department of Health sa ngayon ay ang uh, atin pong minobilize ng ating mga ospital. Ano? So we have downloaded funds already to our regional offices so that they can be able to provide uh, support to our hospitals and our local governments na pabuksan na natin yung mga dengue fast lane sa ospital para hindi po kailangan magantay na matagal ang mga pasyente na may dengue. Tayo rin po ay nakipag-coordinate na with our regional offices para po yung kanilang local governments mamobilize na po yung ating mga dengue brigades. We have dengue brigades in our communities, in our schools, at is dun pa sa ibang sektor, meron po tayong ganyan kung saan tutulong po silang maipatupad ang 4 o'clock habit sa ating komunidad. Kailangan tuwing alas 4, lalabas tayong lahat, maglilinis po tayo ng kapaligiran, tatanggalin lahat ng kuyagot, tatanggalin lahat ang pinamumugaran ng mga kitikiti po na galing po dito sa dengue or Aedes aegypti which causes the dengue virus or disease. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. has asked the private sector to help the government provide support to farmers. Concurrent Agriculture Chief Marco said he was excited to partner with the private sector. The chief executive earlier vowed to look for long-term solutions to address the problems plaguing the country's agriculture sector. He said robust agriculture is a key to building a stronger economy. He also assured his team will seek strategies to address the food price crisis. Take Motorists may be able to relax a bit as a big-time fuel price rollback is coming next week. Department of Energy Oil Industry Management Bureau Director Rino Abad confirms the price drop before the weekend. Abad said fuel prices may go down by 4 to 6 pesos per liter. He said the reasons for the rollback include the lockdown in Shanghai, China, interest hikes by various countries, and the threat of recession. Oil industry insiders, meanwhile, predicted a rollback of 6 pesos and 30 centavos to 6 pesos and 50 centavos per liter of diesel and 5 pesos and 
70 centavos to 5 pesos and 90 centavos per liter of gasoline. President Bongbong Marcos met with the key energy officials to address the continued oil price hike. The meeting came two days after oil companies implemented a big-time price rollback for diesel and kerosene. Marcos earlier disclosed this plan to include tricycle drivers in the government's fuel subsidy program. The Department of the Interior and local government announced that over 600,000 tricycle drivers nationwide will be receiving fuel subsidy. Philippine Ambassador to the United States of San Manuel Romualdez is hoping President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and his counterpart at President Joe Biden could meet in Washington, D.C. before November. Marcos is expected to attend the United Nations General Assembly in September, making this his first trip to the West as President. Romualdez said he hopes Marcos would speak before the UN in response to the interest people have shown in him before the elections. He also expects Marcos to have meetings with other leaders. However, talks with Biden in the sidelines of the assembly are possible but unlikely. The envoy said a possible meeting at Washington, D.C. would depend on the schedule of both leaders. Still ahead, provinces step up vaccination against COVID-19 amid an uptick in cases. And the Public Works Department is focusing on infrastructure aimed at ensuring food security. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Hi everyone, James Deacon here. The COVID-19 vaccines are finally here and the government wants to make sure the vaccines reach us. So let's do our part by making sure that we get registered to be included in the vaccination list of our LGU. You can register right in the comfort and safety of your own homes through your LGU's online registration platform. And you can also register on site in the vaccination venues or through your barangay. Remember, getting vaccinated is the first step towards ending this pandemic. So let's do our part as disciplined citizens. Vida ang may disiplina. Magpaharehistrot, magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. Availing booster shots against COVID-19 is not mandatory under the new administration. The Health Department assured the stance in clarification to speculations about the possible requirement of booster jobs. Health spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere said that President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos' order is only to increase the coverages of COVID-19 booster doses. Gusto natin klaruhin, ano? Wala pong binigay na statement ang ating gobyerno, ang kagawaran na ang ating pong pamuna ay mandatory. We also did not give any statement that boosters will become mandatory. Wala po yan sa ating direction, wala rin po yan sa ating mga pronouncements. Ang ating pong sinasabi, kailangan lang po talaga maitaas po natin ang antas ng booster doses uptake. Dito po sa ating bansa. As of July 5, more than 70.8 million Filipinos are already fully vaccinated. This include over 9 million adolescents and 3.6 million children. 
The DOH aims to vaccinate 90% of the A2 population or senior citizens as well as administer booster shots to 50% of the eligible population. We are now working with the rest of the government agencies para maitaas natin ito, maipatupad natin ang mga strategiya at saka instructions and guidance na naibigay sa atin ng ating presidente. The Bicol Region and Davao City are ramping up their COVID-19 vaccination drive as health authorities record COVID-19 cases uptick. More than 160% increase in COVID-19 cases was recorded from June 26 to July 2 in the Bicol Region. The health office noted an additional 82 cases from only 32 during the previous week. The region has so far recorded 401 active cases, 33 recoveries and 6 deaths. To date, almost 12,000 individuals were vaccinated, particularly in Albay, Camarines Sur, Camarines Norte, and Masbate. Meanwhile, the Davao City likewise sees a spike in COVID-19 cases. To date, only 21% got their first booster shots. The vaccination teams are currently administering COVID-19 shots in the 18 district health centers of the city. TESDA held its annual Skills Olympics in Lanao del Norte, showcasing the competence of its graduates and promoting the local products in the region. The details are from Lou Antonio of the Philippine Information Agency. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority Lanao del Norte held the provincial skills competition to recognize the skills excellence of young industry-skilled workers and graduates of technical vocational schools and training centers in the province and in Iligan City. 41 competitors from tech voc schools and training centers joined the competition. There are 10 identified skills areas such as bakery, cookery, electrical installation, welding, feeds formulation, and others. Napakalaking opportunity po ito sa kanila, especially sa mga graduates natin. This will be a showcase, no? a showcase not only to test the uh, officials but more importantly to prospective employers. It's only through these competitions na nakikita nila yung mga the best of the best talaga. Winners will represent the province in the regional skills competition, moving up to the Philippine National Skills Competition and in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations World Skills Competition. A bazaar also showcased various products produced with the help of agricultural training. So it's one way of, um, of of telling the world, telling the public, na if it really works, especially in Lanao del Norte, it can contribute not only to food production and sustainability, but more importantly, sa employability. The competition is pursuant to the Section 30 of the Republic Act 7796 or the TESDA Act of 1994 that states that annual skills Olympics should be conducted by TESDA to promote quality skills development in the country. For the PNA Newsroom, Lu Antonio of the PAA Iligan City and Lanao del Norte. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. has ordered the prioritization of infrastructure projects that would aid in the food security program of the government. According to DPWH Secretary Manuel Bunuan, the current administration will continue to pursue big-ticket projects under the Build, Build, Build program. In particular, projects aiding farmers such as farm-to-market roads in convergence with the Department of Agriculture will be advanced. Bunoan added other priorities are the interconnectivity of regions and convergence programs with other agencies. The world-famous Boracay Island is seeing signs of recovery from the impact of pandemic travel curbs. This as the island records a 69% increase in the number of local and foreign tourists in June. A clan representative, Teodorico Haresco Jr., cited a report from the Municipal Tourism Office of Malay in Aklan showing a constant influx of foreign tourists on the island, reaching 6,873 tourists in June, up from 2,533 in March. He also notes that the strict enforcement of health protocols while keeping holistic and comprehensive efforts to expand tourism recovery and build back the economy better remains a challenge. Tourism Secretary Cristina Frasco said the agency will give more attention to tourism sites, people and products from the country's 81 provinces, over 140 cities and over 1,400 municipalities.
More stories from the newsroom. The city government of Zamboanga continues to aid hog racers affected by the African swine fever. And a mid-year bonus awaits the country's medalists in the Southeast Asian Games. Details ahead. Stay with the PNA Newsroom. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paikot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Hundreds of thousands of Muslim pilgrims have made their way to the annual Hajj pilgrimage amid the warm weather and COVID-19 threat. The maximum crowd is capped at a million, the highest figure since the onset of the pandemic. These ceremonies are taking place despite the COVID-19 uptick in cases. But only fully vaccinated individuals who tested negative against the virus have been allowed to enter their holy place. The white-robed worshippers then traveled to Mina from Islam's holiest site, Mecca's Grand Mosque, after they encircled their Black Kaaba. The Philippine government, meanwhile, declared Saturday a holiday in honor of our Muslim brothers and sisters' commemoration of Eid al-Adha. The Zamboanga city government continues to provide assistance for residents affected by African swine fever or ASF infestation. Some 1.5 million pesos in financial aid has been released to hog racers hit by the outbreak. 439 of the 298 local hog racers affected by the ASF received 5,000 peso aid each. Mayor John Dalipe assured the rest of the affected hog farmers that they will receive the same cash assistance in the coming days as part of the city's assistance crisis situation or AICS. OCVET Chief Dr. Mario Ariola noted that the hog disease resulted in the death of some 1,029 hogs with 514 culled so far. No other town has been added to the 14 ASF-infested barangays since the city was placed under red zone. Here's good news for the Hanoi Southeast Asian Games medalists. The Philippine Olympic Committee has released its cash incentives as a mid-year bonus. POC President Bambol Tolentino said the Hanoi athletes will have a total of 11.15 million pesos worth of incentives deposited through their land bank accounts. The MVP Sports Foundation, San Miguel Corporation President and CEO Ramon Ang and Charlie Gonzalez Ulticon Builders were the major benefactors of the bonuses. National Sports Association President Tom Carrasco and Ting Ledesma as well as the coaches and athletes thanked the POC for the bonuses. The Philippines finished fourth in Hanoi with 52 golds, 70 silvers, and 105 bronze medals. Children now have a safe way to learn how to save the environment. 
the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in Region 10 has launched a gaming app that teaches proper handling and segregation of garbage. Vince Bautista has a story. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources Region 10's campaign for solid waste management was further elevated as the agency introduced its new gaming app, the Basura Buster. The Basura Buster mobile gaming application is designed for kids 5 to 8 years old to teach them proper waste segregation in a fun way. The gaming app is one of the projects under the campaign. Aside from having fun while playing the game, the agency aims to develop the child's critical thinking by asking how the game is played and teaching and training them to study on the importance of solid waste management. The ENR 10's campaign for solid waste management aims to instill an optimistic and enhanced environmental behavior in kids and adults alike towards better solid waste management, not just in the region, but for the nation as well. They urge the public to practice the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle, and to help one another protect the environment. For PNA Newsroom, Vince Bautista, Philippine Information Agency, Misamis Oriental. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has tested positive for COVID-19. The presidential management staff advises those who had close contact with the president to observe protocols and monitor themselves for symptoms. The government is working round the clock to aid those affected by floods in Ifugao as heavy rains continue to batter the province, displacing some 500 families. Motorists may get some breathing space as an oil price rollback looms next week due to some global developments. And on the road to recovery, Boracay Island sees a jump in tourist arrivals more than two years after the coronavirus pandemic grounded flights and halted global tourism activities. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, Wear face masks and face shields. Wash your hands often. Practice safe physical distancing. Go out only for essential reasons. And get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. You may also watch us on PTV4. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I'm Marita Mwahe. Stay safe and have a good day.